In this video, I want to show how to model a simple Java program using a UML class diagram with Argo UML. We'll start with the project we've been working on. I'm not going to worry about create a truck or inventory reader or any other of the files that we may have come up with. My concern is just for vehicle and driver. And if you've noticed a theme while we've been putting these together, vehicle is a class that describes a car where a driver is a class where we do all of our user interaction. So anytime we need to prompt the user for information or display information to the user, we're doing that in our driver class. So our driver class is essentially acting like a user interface, and this is very much on purpose. So just note driver and vehicle. Let's take a look at the class driver, and we see we have a method called main, which is a static method. We'll get into that more in a future video. We also have a method which is also static called prompt user. If you take a look at the driver class, we don't have any variables that are declared outside of these two methods. So in other words, we don't have any attributes or anything that's describing the state of the driver class. If we take a look at the vehicle class, first we uh, note the package name edu.uc.jonesbr.vehicles. Note that we do have three variables that are described in vehicle, but are not within a method. They're declared within the class vehicle, but not declared within a method. This makes them special variables. This makes them attributes because they describe the state of the object. In other words, we know that a blue car is blue. We know that a car that has driven 100,000 miles will have 100,000 miles on the odometer. These things describe a vehicle. There are other variables like this gas consumed variable, which is only used for a temporary calculation and doesn't describe the vehicle over a long term. So we want to model the classes. We want to remember the package that they're in. We also want to think about the attributes that they have. And we want to consider some of the methods. We don't need to think about all the getters and setters, but any kind of method that demonstrates some kind of behavior, like the go method that we have here. Uh, we want to think about how we're going to model that. So let's take a look at Argo UML and let's start putting this together. Argo, Argo UML is a, a free tool, one that I've used uh, since I started teaching, and it has actually changed very little, but it's very functional and something I've used for uh, many, many classes. So once I'm in Argo UML, I can choose Create and the New Class Diagram. Up here you see a folder shape, and so I'm going to drop, drop this down because this represents a package. Now a package is analogous to a folder structure on the file system. It's also a nice way that we can organize our classes in a Java program. This Java program has a few Java classes in it, but an industrial strength Java program can many times have hundreds or even thousands of Java classes, so we have to think about a good way to organize them. And we organize them in this package or essentially a series of folders. So edu.uc.jonesbr.vehicles, I'm going to put this towards the top, edu.uc.jonesbr.vehicles. Now, I want to represent the two classes we're discussing here, driver and vehicle. So for that, I click on this thing that kind of looks like a three-layer a three -layer sandwich, something like that. And I simply drop it, and you notice that it, can, it stays constrained within this package. So as I move the package, the class moves with it. Now, this class has three boxes. The top section is where we put the name of the class, which is driver. In the middle section, you'll see it says add instance variables to driver. Now, what's an instance variable? Well, keep in mind that the names of these have changed over the years, so sometimes I'll call it an attribute or a field. But they are these variables that describe the state of an object. Remember, we don't have any in driver, so there's nothing there that we need to represent. So we're going to skip that middle box for driver. Now, the lower box is operations. For operations, think method. So I click on the plus, and we know that this one has a method called main, and it takes an args value, which is of type string. So I'll represent like so. And UML will typically put uh, the variable name, and then a colon, and then the type, like so. Now, we know that we have one other method in driver, and that is the prompt user method. So we'll go back and take a look at that. Because remember, the main method is calling the prompt user method. So we come back here, and I'm going to add one more operation. Uh, this time, if I want, I can either click on the plus or I can click on the new operation box down at the bottom. And actually, this gives me a lot of places where I can enter additional information about the method. 
remember the uh, remember the access modifier we talked about that in a previous video it can be either public package protected or private in our case we're just going to think about public and private um, we can specify return types and even more things like that but for our purposes this is a simple method this is simply a method called prompt user so notice this time I'm simply completing the name down in this, in this little kind of uh, helper down at the bottom so there's my driver class now one thing that we remember is that the driver class is going to create a series of objects of type vehicle so let's represent that vehicle class so I have my vehicle but now notice I'm going to whoops uh, in that case I mistakenly added an additional uh, method so I'm just going to delete that it's easy to do when I'm selecting so I select on driver and note I'm going to drag this line from driver driver to vehicle and when I drag the line across it's a solid line with no arrows on either side so this indicates what we call a uses a relationship a driver uses a vehicle and that sounds a lot like real life and that's the whole intention if I'm a driver I need to use a vehicle to drive now when I clicked we have to be careful because as you noticed a few times I've clicked and I ended up with a new operation or a new attribute it's easy to do that uh, in this case I do need a new operation uh, this new operation is going to be called go and go accepts a, a parameter of type distance so I'm going to click new parameter and for this one I'm going to say distance and notice that it's completing up above as I type in distance and type is integer yes that sounds correct so I will go ahead and click away and we'll save that as it is let's compare this to our program and make sure that that makes sense if I go to vehicle notice my method go my method go accepts a parameter of type distance I'm sorry a parameter named distance and the type on that is int so back to my uh, class diagram we see here we have a method go uh, the method go is public which if I scroll down will confirm that the uh, that the uh, access modifier on that is public and it does accept a distance of type integer uh, capital I integer here that's okay we're just describing the concept uh, so we'll stick with capital I integer everything else looks good here now I do want to represent the state of this object vehicle and we know that we have three instance fields or instance variables or attributes whatever you want to call them there are gallons of gas which is a double miles per gallon which is an int and odometer which is an int so let's do this a few different ways first I'll click and you see it lets me just type in here if I want so I can say uh, miles per gallon I remember that was one of the integers order doesn't matter tremendously here uh, I can also click down here and choose new attribute and you see that gives me this wizard again so new attribute will say odometer and that looks good and we'll give it one more new attribute and this one will make gallons of gas so I select and I'm going to choose the new attribute one more time and this one we're going to call gallons of gas now this says integer right now but integer assumes that we consume an entire gallon of gas at once as one unit which is not really how it works so I scroll down here and gosh I don't see anything that indicates a floating point type uh, and an integer is not a floating point type so I could easily change this to something like string and you see that it updates on the user interface here but it really is not a string it really is a floating point type so I go up towards the top here and I'm going to click on the new data type and for the new data type uh, we'll just call this uh, let's say double like so okay and this one is actually provided to us by Java so we don't really need to kind of take a look at that but the advantage is uh, if I go down here now with gallons of gas let's take a look and sure enough there's our double so if I see a type that's not present uh, maybe it's from a library or something like that I can very easily create the type and then I can use that as an attribute type in my UML diagram so that is a quick, a quick look at how to use Argo UML. There is much more to go on this, much more to see. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I'll give you just a quick look at what else we can do, and we'll talk about these in future, in, uh, future videos. If I choose Go To Diagram, here's a class diagram I'm working on for a different class. Whoops, we'll go to this one right here. 
And in this case, you can see we have other kind of relationships between classes and among classes and interfaces. So here we have something called interface. We have a series of other classes. Um, lots more to go on that. I have separate videos that cover that, but hopefully this gave you a nice intro on how we can use Argo UML to model an object-oriented program. Thank you.